Hi everybody, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Hope you're doing well today. Welcome to a brand new day of your life and thank you so much for joining us here on 60 and Me. We talk about all kinds of topics here and today I want to talk about one that probably is um, at one point in your life been the most important uh, issue to deal with and something that we're probably most fearful about and that is change. Now, Malcolm Dewey is one of our bloggers and he's an artist and wrote a really nice story about how to use change for positive growth in your 60s. And uh, I think it's a really powerful story. He tells his own story a little bit, how he left a very traditional job and went into the world of, of, of creativity and painting and art and, um, you know, how that changed his life in a positive way. And I think that that's the kind of the gist of the conversation today. And I'd love you to join in, you know, leave your comments below and share with people how you've done this, this transition. I mean, being 60, 70 is not easy. I mean, that's an understatement. I mean, we are faced with so many decisions and choices about directions that we want to go. Do we want to stay on the path that we've shaped all our lives or are we ready for some change? And um, as Malcolm mentions in his article, there are three big fears that, you know, that we, that we, that we deal with in our lives. Uh, the first is the fear of failure. You know, that's a, we don't want to try new things because we don't want to fail. And that's a pretty common uh, fear that we all have to confront at some time in our lives, almost certainly. The other is kind of the opposite, which is the fear of success. And that was where you get into this imposter syndrome that so you've done something well, you've gotten the recognition, and now you, you, know, you can't live up to it. You can't be what, you, what people think you are. It's a very powerful fear a lot of people deal with. But the third is change, the fear of change. And that is actually, in a way, the biggest one because it's the fear of all kinds of change. Um, it's the, the change in circumstances. It's the change in your um, body, your your aging self, and it's also the the change from something doing something differently, you know, like from being this and changing into that, and of course, ultimately, it's the change in life that we have to face our, our own mortality and and the big changes that that we deal with um, on the road to that in the in the last chapter of of, uh, the, of life. So uh, those are the three things that he talks about in terms of the big fears, and I think that change he says is probably the most difficult one, but it has in Malcolm's opinion, the, mo the most potential for growth. Now, he says in his 20s, he was full of confidence, lots of opportunity, lots of, you know, he took risks. He was, and, and same with me. I mean, think back in your 20s, the things that you just seem like you had forever ahead of, ahead of you and you could do anything that your heart desired. And, you know, the, the change was actually kind of like an adventure, like moving to a new house, getting a new apartment, you know, starting a new job. All that was change, but it was like, yeah, bring it on. It's like, I love this. This is what you do. But now um, as you got older, you know, change became, and you got established in your ways and you got more, you know, comfortable with your money or comfortable with your job or comfortable with your roles that you played. You know, you just like didn't want to change. What was the point? I've, and then you make compromises along the way. Like you make little like tweaks, like you say, oh, well, um, you know, I don't want to change my job because, well, it's a good job and it has good money and it's in the right location and oh, the, the people are nice and my boss is okay. And you just go through this whole justification process. So by the time you're in your fifties, you know, you're kind of like, you've run out of excuses for some, doing something that you don't want to do. And you know, you've got to, you've got to change. And so, um, you know, as, as Malcolm says, you know, time, however, is a thief. Um, you know, it's, it actually um, takes from you your ability to be f carefree and changeable and, um, you know, eager for new things. It takes that uh, creativity and that comfort with adventure and turns it into more predictable, sane, safe um, alternatives. So the fear of losing things that you've earned, you know, like the things you bought, I mean, I don't want to have to, you know, I've got a new car, but if I do give up my job, I'll probably have to get a, the bus and, you know, whatever, you know, you just don't want to change. And that's really, really important. But this, he says, this is like the, you know, the um, ego has landed, <laughs> you know, the ego just settles in and you just like don't want to make bad decisions. You don't want to do things that are going to upset you, that are going to change your world. And your brain, of course, is doing its very best to keep you on track. Don't change. Don't take a risk. Protect yourself. It's just what it does. I mean, that's genetically what we're what we're geared to do. So. What do you do? Well, change for positive growth uh, has to start with just being ready to let go of some things. And in his case, it was about having a side hustle. He made a transition from his job. I forget what his job was now, but he, you know, he moved from that job into painting. 
And maybe that's the one way to start is a side hustle where you just don't give up your job yet, but you do something that you love, even if it's volunteering. You know, something. Another thing that's really uh, helpful, one of our other bloggers wrote this article a while ago. I don't even know if I can find it, but it was about doing a pretend retirement. So, you know, you may be thinking, I've got to retire, I'm going to retire in a certain number of years, and I'm going to just pretend that right now I'm on that budget, whether it's my Social Security, uh, withdrawals from savings, um, or whatever, if you, if you want to start a new job or start a new business, but you've got to start living, like do like six months of that and all the money that you've saved put into something that you want to do. But you will find yourself saving money because you're, you're spending now based on, you know, your, your salary and who wants to change. I mean, that's, I mean, you may have other expenses, but you, you, you don't want to make that change. So the other, the second thing is to try, then when you've done this kind of side hustle or this test retirement, then you can just jump into a new life, into a, a leap of faith, into a new life and manage that fear from a position of strength. You're knowing that really you can't go back. You know, I mean, you, I suppose you could try to go back to the company that you worked for and say, I've changed my mind, can I come back? But you know, most of the time, once you've left, you've burned the bridges and you're kind of, well, not always, you can always go back as a consultant. That may be one of the side hustles that you want to do. You know, go back to the company that you went back, to, you, that you left. But the point here is that you have an opportunity to grow, to, to do something bigger and better and different. And the, you know, as you get older, you're, you're, you're more fearful to return to that, ex that crazy, experimental, changeable, um, passionate youth. But, you know, you can do it. You can do it too in a moderated way. Changing home is another uh, big thing, moving to a new home. If you live in a big house, your children may have left. If you had, had kids or your, your partner might have um, got, and passed away or you may have divorced. And now you're in this four bedroom, three bedroom house and you want to live in the middle of the city in a studio like I do. And that's, you know, kind of a passion, then do it. But it's hard. And the, the one of the next things that he talks about, you know, in, in terms of getting making change a positive thing is to learn how to manage fear how do you do that well there's some ways i mean you can you know calm your brain down when it gets panicky by meditation mindfulness um going for walks in nature i know these sound so trivial and kind of what's the word like superficial because they said they just sound like so normal but they are where this that's where the secret is we're not on a we can't go to another planet or or, or you know or try to you know change our our history or who we were we have to be with who we are and, and what you know what we stand for and um you know what are your examples that you've used as you face a fear what have you done to protect yourself and to and to make the change uh, with resolve and, and courage and, and a boldness, which is what it really takes. What motivated you? Sometimes it's just a situation, but you know, that just can't take it anymore. But most of the time there's a thoughtfulness process that goes through it. Um, one thing he talks about is, um, you know, taking the path of least resistance. And for some people that is a good place to start, you know, um, knowing that we cling to the things that in some ways give us strength and power and energy. And those things are, you know, we can't, it's sometimes helpful to hold on to those and, you know, and, and know that you will be helped by it. But the final thing really is to know yourself. <laughs> I say this so many times in videos and I think, yeah, Margaret, how, how do people do that? Well, it is just uh, all these things. It's just appreciating that overcoming fear is one of the number one ways of knowing yourself. Because if you can get over the fear of change, particularly, you can then start to understand what the triggers are. What was it in your childhood, perhaps? What was it in your in your youth that you took a chance, you did something to change your circumstances and it turned out not to be what you wanted? But um, I think Malcolm's story here is that the greatest potential for growth and for fun and enjoyment in your life is if you can just take that step and do it. You know, make a bold step forward and accept accept a change in your life and you know, look, you can always go back, right? I mean, if you, if you leave your job and become an artist and then you don't, you know, you don't make any money or you hate it or whatever, you can do something else. I mean, life is full of these processes of, um, you know, getting on with new things and trying diff different things. So um, is, is fear your guide or your master? Good question from Malcolm. I think that's a really good question to ponder on. Are you able to embrace change in your life or are you very resistant to making changes? 
Leave your comments in the section below. Let's have a chat. And again, thank you so much for being here, for listening to the video, spending some time with, with me here. And if you do like this video, we put four different videos up every year, every every year, every, every week. So please uh, like this uh, channel, subscribe to it and press that notification bell because that actually en enables you to know when new videos are posted. And also, um, if you, you know, at a minimum, just give it this video a like. Uh, YouTube loves if you leave a comment below. They then tend to spread the, the word a bit. So I appreciate that. But again, thanks from the bottom of my heart for being here and for being such an amazing group of women. I, I, I get so much from you and hope that you um, find value and inspiration here too. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. Lots of love. Bye-bye.